Tarzan is the third King Hu film I've watched so far, the second of his films after he left Hong Kong and Shaw Brothers for Taiwan. The first film, Dragon Inn, kept some of the framework of the concept of the Wuxia Western while using Taiwan's more diverse scenery for a significantly greater visual effect. Now, Dutch of Zen, on the other hand, leans more heavily into the Wuxia side of things, much more heavily, while still dramatically focusing and centering the scenery of Taiwan in the film. Now, again, as always with my review, I don't speak child any Chinese in any form, not Mandarin, Cantonese, and I'll admit I have a degree of a speech impediment regarding certain phonemes, so I'm going to apologize in advance for any of my mispronunciations. A touch of Zen sows this shift, shift right from the jump with our audience perspective character, whose name I'm probably immediately going to mispronounce, of Gu Sheng Sai, who's played by Xi Chun, who also appeared in Dragon Inn. Gu is an artist and scholar of certainly a great deal of knowledge, but little ambition. Satisfied with doing some teaching, doing some scribe work, and portrait painting, but not much more beyond that. Indeed, when the film opens, we see a normal day in his life, and it includes Gu's mother giving him the Why don't you become a doctor speech, except instead of becoming a doctor, it's taking the government service exam. When a investigator for the Eastern Chamber, the Emperor's Secret Police, run by Unix, and generally depicted as being evil by pretty much anyone who's doing a Wuxia film, no matter where it's being made, shows up in town, Gu ends up falling purely by accident into the film's real plot. Specifically, the presumably haunted, abandoned manor that Gu walks past on the way to his stall every morning is where the actual protagonist of the film, whose name I'm also going to probably mangle, um... Yang Hui Zhen, who's played by actress Su Feng, is holed up. Yang is held by two fugitive generals, Shi Wenqiao, played by Bai Jing, and Lu Ding An, who's played by Xu Han. Again, I apologize to all these actors if I'm and for mangling their names, and to the screenwriter or uh, <laughs> for mangling the character names as well. Now, Yang's father was a general who was going to blow the whistle on the Eastern Chamber's abuses and basically attempts to more or less usurp power from the Emperor to the Emperor himself. However, the eunuchs caught wind of this, killed him, and are in the process of wiping out the rest of his family, including Yang. Gu falls for Yang and insists on helping her fight back, with Gu serving as her strategist. So, over, again, Gu is not our lead. He, like Jack Burton in Big Trouble in Little China, is 100% Yang's sidekick. Although, unlike in Big Trouble in Little China, Gu has no illusions of actually being the hero of this movie. Uh, in fact, indeed, for this film, a lot of the narrative is expanded through very extensive flashbacks that are exclusively from Yang's perspective, as Yang and the generals provide information to Gu. Now, a Touch of Zen really takes advantage of the differences in terrain between Hong Kong and Taiwan a lot more than his Shaw Brothers fare, again, in a similar way to Dragon Inn. In the Shaw Brothers films, not just with Come Drink With Me, but with other Shaw Brothers movies, when films go on location, they tend to go to the hills around Hong Kong, which I would describe in terms of a biome as closer to like the areas of, frankly, Southern California, where you saw a lot of westerns filmed. Lots of yellowish general grass, not necessarily dead, but grass that tends to grow in those colors. Um, trees tend to be more um, evergreen with needles. Um, like Not like the, the palm trees that are artificially planted in like Los Angeles, but can get start getting out in the hills. And But also the camera in those movies tended to feel very locked off. Um, to a position like, okay, if we move too far in any direction, we are going to see, you're going to break the illusion, you will see buildings, you will see planes, you will see boats, uh, modern boats, giving the film an unintended sense of claustrophobia in shots that are clearly supposed to have the opposite effect. Whereas, with who, it's very different. Like To back up again, it with the Hong Kong movies, it's a sense of, like, 
when you see enough movies shooting at the Vasquez Rocks natural area, you will eventually recognize Kirk's Rocks by sight. Not just because, oh, I saw that episode of Star Trek a lot in reruns, but because you saw it on Star Trek and on like five or six different westerns on AMC or Turner Classic Movies or on some other channel on reruns. And eventually just you, every single possible camera angle that you could use to film them has been used. Whereas with Dragon Inn and Come Drink With Me in particular, you have, novelty helps. Novelty certainly helps here, but it's, you have a difference in the variety of terrain and scenery available and it makes the film gives the film a much broader sense of where it is and what type of um of, of the scope of the story the it, it, it to make another comparison it's the difference between a western shot in Vasquez rocks and then john ford in monument valley it is a broader scope it is a bigger environment and it feels wider um, even if it's in with the shots in what is clearly a very otherwise claustrophobic and confined valley it's still having this shot and the variety of camera angles that who is able to use in this valley gives the movie a makes it movie feel bigger in a way that some of these even similar environments in and around Hong Kong that would would otherwise have been used by Shaw Brothers or Golden Harvest or what have you would do for those films. And this is important because also, as I implies, the film is not just bigger in scope in terms of its narrative. It also is bigger in scope in terms of the themes it's discussing. It as as the title of A Touch of Zen goes, it's a little more spiritual while still having impressive fight scenes and political struggles and that sort of thing. And the more spiritual themes are carried over through the film to the character of Abbot Hui Hui Yuan, who's played by Roy Chow. The character is explicitly stated in the plot as being almost a Buddha, as far as the dialogue, as almost a Buddha, and basically becomes one over the course of the film. His character progression to Buddhahood is not the focus of the story, but it dramatically changes the tone of the film whenever this character is involved. And he shows up in just very instrumental scenes, but just is there, and it changes how the characters react to this. And in fact, this it also in terms of reflecting differently to the scope of the violence of the film. Um, the climax of the movie is this big action set piece with uh, a bunch of fighters working for the uh, Eastern office attacking the manor and Gu having set up a variety of traps and stratagems and that sort of things to pick these guys down and whittle down their forces. And the climax of it is Gu originally coming out, seeing his traps in action and deployed and that they've been successful and being all very happy and smug with himself. And then he starts seeing the bodies of everyone who's killed, who, who died, not just in terms of friendlies, but also enemy forces as well. And he becomes very visibly horrified and disturbed by the death toll that he's wrought. And as opposed to Lots of other takes that you see of this where either they're satisfied or satisfied or ambivalent with the death toll or just like mildly saddened, but not like really upset. And Goo is really upset by this. And I think that leads much more into the general tone of the film. There's like a not like a massive death toll at the end of Come Drink With Me. There's not exactly a massive death toll at the end of Dragon Inn, but you don't really have this sense of like truly being distraught at the number of deaths involved by the protagonists. Whereas Gu, who is an outsider to the martial life, to the life of a fighter or of a rebel or that sort of thing, is when he's coming to terms with this is much more horrified. And I th really strikes at the core of what I think 
King Hugh is getting at with this movie that combined with all of the plot arcs around, around the app and the narrative stuff involving the abbot. In short, Dragon Anton felt like King Hu stretching his wings as a director after stepping free from the confines and somewhat formulaic elements of Shaw Brothers films. I mean, yeah, certainly some of them are much more diverse in the concepts they execute than others. I mentioned by my much, much earlier review of Heaven and Hell. But still, it was it, to a certain degree of confinement in, that felt like in his film. Um, in... Come drink with me. A touch of Zen feels like who in flight. It's while he's still certainly operating within the constraints of being in Taiwan um, and possible restrictions for that government's degree of free speech. Um, it's tricky when talking about cinema from, you know, from Taiwan and other countries, certain countries around this time, like even Japanese cinema, when you get into the 50s and 60s, there's kind of like, okay, how much of their of what they're presenting in their films is restricted by, limited by government restrictions. Same thing with American cinema, with the like post Hayes Code and all that other stuff. So it's this isn't necessarily being particularly. I mean, it's somewhat like how do I put this. I realize I'm tap dancing on a round of land and a minefield here, but it's like let's redo this section. In short, Dragon Inn felt like King Hu stretching his wings as director after stepping free from the studio system, for lack of a better term, of the Shaw Brothers films, and to a certain degree, their competition with Golden Harvest. A touch of Zen is Hu in flight. It feels that there's a much broader sense of creative freedom here. Yes, you can make a case that there's also a degree of restrictions related to what the Taiwanese government of the 1960s will let you do or not do. But that's also something that 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 is not unique to Taiwan. I mean, there are certain aspects aspects of it that are more like are differently unique. Not not unique, but are different compared to other countries, even in within Asia. Um, but still, there feels like much more creative freedom. If you look at A Touch of Zen and you put it next to Come Drink With Me, you have it's like night and day. It's definitely clear, like, like for starters, why this film got picked in the, in the Criterion Collection and not Come Drink With Me because this film has this real sense of experimentation, of broader themes than you would necessarily get with your what you normally think of as your customary Shaw Brothers wuxia film and what they're aiming for for that market, for the um, Hong Kong market. And I really appreciate it, and I really enjoy this broader presentation. It's not that it's not a exciting film. It definitely is. And plenty of engaging fight scenes and all of that, but it's got the sense of it's bringing something much more to the table than even, say, like the, the films of the Venom Mob, with the, with the Venom Mob and Chang Che and those other directors throughout, um, again, through Shaw Brothers. So I definitely absolutely recommend picking up this film even if you're not necessarily like big into okay, actually i will say if you're not big, not into wuxia you may get less out of this if it like actively repels you but it's still it's still a really solid and very very beautiful film it and as i mentioned it is currently available from the criterion collection and streaming as of this recording on criterion channel plus the various dvd and blu-ray releases <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. 
Also, please consider packing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.